Welcome to another Savory Snacks video. This video is a just for fun video. Sometimes it's nice to do something that's slightly off topic. In previous Savory Snacks videos, we did some valves, we did some heat exchangers. In this one, I'm gonna take a look at something a little bit random. I want to take a look at a gas turbine. Gas turbines are also known as combustion turbines. They're used for power generation. They're used for pushing ships through the water. They're used for making aircraft fly. A pretty useful machine is a gas turbine. So let's have a look at a gas turbine. Go down here, doesn't have an image yet because it's hot off the press, only recently finished. And here we go. This is a gas turbine, also called a combustion turbine. There is no difference between the two terms. We go around here, we can see it from this angle. It's beautiful. It is a engineering wonder, believe me. I'll explain to you exactly how it works now because that's kind of the cool thing about it. It's relatively simple. We've got air that gets sucked in here and the air gets compressed then by a compressor. All of these funky blades starting at about here and moving to the left, they're all used to compress the air. Each row of blades is called a stage. As the air passes from left to right, as it's drawn in, it's compressed, its temperature increases, its volume decreases, its density increases as well. And that's all happening as it moves left to right across each of these stages. So we can have a row of compressor blades and each row is a stage. In terms of how much you compress the air, on this example here, we are looking at a ratio of about 15 or 18 to one. Different types of turbines go all the way up to 30 to one. It depends upon the design. I don't wanna go into too much detail though. This is just a, just for fun video. So we're compressing the air. We're then going to discharge it here along and into roughly this space here. And we're going to heat up the air by igniting fuel the fuel is ignited within this space, within this combustion chamber, and the fuel then transfers its heat energy to the air. The air gets heated up, and then it is discharged through these gaps here, through the nozzles, these are called nozzles, and into the turbine section. So these turbine blades, once we pass the hot gas over them, they're going to rotate. So we've got three main parts to the gas turbine. We've got the compressor section here. We've got the combustion area, which is here. Sometimes we'll call this a combustor as well. And then we've got the turbine section, which is here. So compress, ignite or combust, and then expand. In other words, suck, squeeze, bang, blow. Suck, squeeze, bang, blow. Pretty easy to remember if you remember it like that. I don't know why people say suck, squeeze, bang, blow. It sounds a little bit weird if you ask me, but I didn't invent the term. Either way though, it is quite easy to remember it when you say it like that. Suck, squeeze, bang, blow is also what you do in a combustion engine that we use within cars. For example, a two-stroke engine or a four-stroke engine. Four-stroke engines for cars, and trucks, etc., and two-stroke engines more for smaller things like bikes or very large things like ship engines. Either way, though, there are also internal combustion engines, the four-stroke and two-stroke engines, and this is an internal combustion engine as well. The difference is, though, this one's actually a constant or steady flow combustion engine because we're constantly drawing the air in, heating it up, and then discharging it. With a combustion engine, specifically the two-stroke and the four-stroke type, Combustion is not continuous or steady like it is here. So that's a big difference between a gas turbine or this type of internal combustion engine compared to a two-stroke and four-stroke engine. The fuel that's being ignited here, it may be natural gas, it may be pulverized coal, it may be some sort of light fuel oil like diesel. So there are many different things it could be, but it's going to be ignited in here and then we heat up the air and discharge it. We call it a gas turbine. A lot of people believe we call it a gas turbine because it runs on natural gas. That's not actually true. 
We call it a gas turbine because it runs on gas, as in a sort of subdivision of a fluid. To really hammer this point home, it's possible to run this turbine on a different type of gas. The gas that we are running it on here is air. We're just sucking the air in here and then compressing it, heating it up and then discharging it. That's what we refer to as an open cycle. But you can also have a closed cycle gas turbine. And what we do, we use a different gas and we'll close off this end, connect it to a bit of piping and then large tank. And we close off this other end here and we'll pass a gas into and out of the turbine and it will just circulate. That's what we call a closed cycle gas turbine as opposed to an open cycle one. Like I say though, just because it's called a gas turbine doesn't mean it runs on natural gas. It can be fired on up to around 30 different fuels, depends upon the design and manufacturer. So quite a simple concept really, bring in the air from over here, compress it, ignite a fuel, heat up the air, and then discharge it over here. And that way we can use a gas turbine to generate a lot of thrust, for example, for getting an aircraft into the air. We can use a gas turbine for propelling ships through the water, and we can use gas turbines for generating electrical power. That's what this one is actually used for. Let's have a look at a type of power station that does use a gas turbine, because then I can explain to you how that works as well. So here we are again. Let's just have a look for, I guess it's going to be under power station maybe. Remember you can access all of these 3D models as well if you want to at savory.com as well as a lot more engineering video tutorials and courses etc. Definitely check all those out if you've got any of the 3D models shown in this video you can do so at savory.com. They're available directly through a web browser which is how I was presenting in this video and you can also load the models in virtual reality and augmented reality. If you're enjoying this video, then check out some of our video courses, lessons and tutorials that we have on Savory.com. There's over 45 hours of video content available, as well as some other courses that are not video based. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. Thank you very much for your time.